Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to this uh, fourth uh, public demo of uh, Grant. My name is Isabella. I'm a sales development manager here at Grant, part of the commercial team. Um, if it's uh, the first time you're here, well, um, we're going to show you a bit around uh, Grant and how it works for those of you that have been here before. Uh, you probably remember seeing how um, Grant works uh, specifically in relation to some topics like the charting tools and uh, how it can connect your presentations to Excel. We also looked at something very specific called the Visual Grid, uh, which is a proprietary tool, and uh, that's something that we're also going to explore in a bit more detail uh, today. So I guess we can get uh, started. Um, before jumping into the uh, demo environment, I'll uh, tell you a little bit about Grant and uh, what it is. So Grunt is a uh, PowerPoint add-in. Um, as you can see on the right side of the screen here, uh, these are the minds behind Grunt in a way. So Grunt is a tool created by former consultants, for consultants, and uh, people in the finance industry primarily. So anyone who works in PowerPoint a lot and deals with a lot of data in the day-to-day probably has some struggles that could be solved with uh, some automations and uh, this is what grant was uh, what grant was um, created for having said that though there are probably many of you who also work a lot on qualitative slides and qualitative presentations and this last topic is also actually what we'll focus on today some challenges there you probably are experiencing right now and and grunt was thought to uh, to solve were some general uh, repetitive and manual work in powerpoint uh, that could be alignment moving boxes around uh, kind of constantly changing formatting to make sure that everything is consistent uh, but all in all is all all things that take out a lot of time, but also can have some consequences on um, delivering projects on time, for example, on top of perhaps having some slides that are not quite right in terms of data. So kind of missing out on mistakes here and there. So uh, Grunt uh, was thought exactly um, to, to solve these uh, these challenges. The sessions uh, on th that we're having these Wednesdays every week are mainly for uh, new users, people that have not used Grunt before, uh, and some people that ha ha have just started uh, using Grunt. Although there can be some golden nuggets for some intermediate users as well, and some people that have used Grunt for a few months already. Now, um, Grant's focus is mainly on two elements. Uh, one is charts and uh, connecting your data to Excel, as I mentioned at the beginning. But then there is a second element, which is probably uh, the coolest one, or at least the, the most helpful one sometimes, which is something called Visual Grid. Uh, so um, the Visual Grid was, uh, was thought to solve some, some common issues with PowerPoint. And uh, one of the key issues with PowerPoint is that more often than not, the objects on your slides and the content on your slide is very disconnected from each other. Uh, so you, you end up having a bunch of shapes, icons, text boxes that have no relation. Um, and what Grant does is kind of combining everything into under one roof in, in a way uh, and uh, making sure that you have an easy way to change everything in one go. A second element is also the visualization, so allowing you to visualize your, your text and data uh, with uh, icons like Harvey Balls, like you can see in this slide, or flags or logos, uh, something that is usually very cumbersome uh, to do in PowerPoint. And that's probably why also most people kind of give up on doing it in the first place. And you end up having slides that are quite uh, uh, simple. Uh, there's not a lot of visual elements and uh, you might miss out on communicating the message the right way. The last element is automation. So automation in two senses. So one is uh, connecting slides to Excel and uh, automating the data updates, but also automating the formatting, uh, making sure that everything is always consistent, but without you having to worry about it in the middle of the night when you're really tired after a full day in, in PowerPoint. 
So jumping into what grunt is uh, and how you can find a around it. So this is the grunt tab. Uh, it lives inside PowerPoint. And as you can see, there are a few icons in here. There are a few different features. Uh, the one that we're going to focus on today is uh, this one. It's called Visual Grid. And the ones that you saw before were charts and the Excel connection. Having said that, there are also many other useful uh, pieces in here, like templates, gun charts, uh, agenda, and efficiency tools, which I'm sure we'll explore in the following weeks. Now, let me jump out of the uh, presentation and, and go straight into the demo environment so I can show you a little bit about Grunt. So starting with a proposal timeline um, phase flow, um, some, some people call it. So this is something that it's uh, it can be tricky to create in, in PowerPoint, but I think most of all, it's uh, probably very difficult to edit and uh, reuse in the future. And there are a few limitations here, some, some key challenges that the PowerPoint poses. Um, one is the scalability. So creating something like this is not too immediate. It might take some time to find the right chevron to insert in here, the right shape, uh, make sure that they're all the difference, the same size, sorry, uh, create the uh, insert shapes here on the side as well, make sure they're all aligned and they're all consistent. And then having to deal with the text boxes here as well. And as you have maybe the text changing, because maybe you do have some, some updates here, uh, then it becomes a bit of a nightmare to change things around and make sure that everything is always aligned and consistent. So the key challenge, of course, is the creation. But probably most of all is, is keeping up with the changing the changes and then uh, fishing this, uh, this timeline out of an old presentation and reusing it for a new project. And uh, also another another issue is that PowerPoint doesn't quite remember what you do. So uh, you might uh, change uh, the, the borders or the position for some elements, but PowerPoint will not understand that all the other similar elements also have to follow uh, the same, same path. So to solve this, we created something called uh, Visual Grid. And this is a, basically a recreation of what you just saw uh, with Grant's Visual Grid. If I click on it, you'll see that it's uh, basically a table. There are columns and uh, rows as well. There are cells, so quite similar to Excel in in in, in structure, such structure. Sorry. Um, now, what Grant does with this Visual Grid is actually create a relationship between the the text, the the content, and the uh, other objects that you have inside here. And in this case, we have these uh, this shapes here at the top, these chevrons. Um, so if this was PowerPoint, uh, and um, like we saw in, in this case here, if you needed to, let's say, insert uh, a stage uh, 2.1 in the middle here between the two stages, it would be probably quite a bit of work to move everything around and then making sure that everything is looking good. So with Grunt, there is a clear advantage on the structural point of view. So doing something like inserting a column becomes very easy. Now, as you saw, the table itself doesn't expand. It doesn't uh, go and, and grow and kind of uh, uh, go over other objects that you might have in the slide, which may create a lot of problems because then you, you not only have to update this table, but also move the rest around. Uh, so the table stays exactly where it is, is the content that shrinks and realigns and repositions accordingly. But another key advantage is that if I type in my text in the first, uh, the first row here, so let's say phase 3.1, Grunt will remember that this cell in the first row is part of, uh, let's say, this header, uh, the, the, this title row. And Grunt remembers that in the other cells, there are these shapes, there are these chevrons, so the same shape should be applied in this cell as well. And as I go and add text into the rest of the column, of course, I'm not going to get a chevron in, in these cells here. So if I type in my text, I will also get the bullet points um, up there automatically. So this allows you to um, very quickly edit something that you created before and adapt it to, to a new project. 
not just in terms of content, but also in terms of formatting. So if I just go back to the original structure here, uh, you know, let's say that perhaps I'm working with another client, they have a very different corporate branding and I need to use a different uh, color scheme. So I might want to change the, the fill colors for these shapes. So there is this menu here on the side uh, that is called rules. And uh, I have one of them open, as you can see, is the rules for the chevrons. And what rules do essentially is automate that formatting process for you. So if I needed to change the color here, uh, all I would have to do is simply do so from this menu and the whole table is up to date. There are also a few things that are basically impossible to do in PowerPoint uh, that are made very easy here. And one is, for example, the direction of the chevrons. Uh, now, if I had to do something like this in, in PowerPoint, reuse this old slide and, and change the direction, it would probably take me quite a bit of time. Uh, but as you can see, it's quite immediate. Uh, even something like the, the skewing uh, of, the, of the shapes, it becomes very immediate to do. And also a few other options. So this guarantees consistency as well within the table. Now, something else that is possible to do is actually add more, more shapes, more visual elements onto this table. And an example, if we look at the previous, um, the previous slide that we had here created with native PowerPoint, we have these shapes here on the side as well. So here, becomes very easy with, uh, with Grunt. We would be using this menu here on the side. It's called rules. Uh, there is a specific rule called shapes. And what Grunt, is, what Grunt does is insert a shape into these cells. There are a few different styles. I prefer a more uh, a pointy corner rather than a rounded ones. Uh, I will also tell Grunt to apply a specific fill color. Uh, in terms of sizing as well, I might want something that looks a bit uh, a bit better, a bit more consistent. So I'll uh, I'll just get the shapes to fill in the whole cell. So in a couple of seconds, I have another element in this in this table, and uh, always in terms of of structure, um, you know, let's say that the text here grows and it becomes uh, it becomes longer, like I showed just a few moments ago in the previous slide. So I'll input my text and instead of the text overflowing into the next cell, which is what usually happens in PowerPoint, uh, Grant automatically adapts the column to fit the whole, the whole text. Uh, and I don't have to worry about it. Of course, there are a few other options in case I need maybe to um, have a different size. Of course, I can still do that and then Grant will wrap the text automatically for me. So there's always some, some flexibility there. Now, another example of how the visual grid can be leveraged is with a status report. So this is a status report done with, again, classic PowerPoint. Um, probably some of you could create something that looks a bit better than this one. Uh, but most status reports are done in a quite uh, simple way. Uh, there's always a list of tasks and uh, responsible people for those tasks perhaps a priority uh, lane to kind of indicate what the priority is for, for the individual tasks and the status that perhaps changes on a daily basis or a weekly basis. Now, ideally what we'd want to do with, uh, with a status report like this, especially if it needs to be updated on a daily or a weekly basis is uh, focus on the content, just having to let the audience know what's happened in the past week. Not really spend too much time making sure that the fill color here in the background looks uh, is, is correct. Uh, and uh, I remember to update the fill color based on the text that changes and so on. Uh, so again, Grant kind of solves that issue. Uh, this is a status report created again with the visual grid. There are a couple of advantages here. One is that it looks very neat and professional uh, compared to the, the classic PowerPoint table. But also there are visual elements in here, uh, like in this column where we have these traffic lights, these icons that indicate the status of the individual tasks and the progress column with a percentage of, uh, of the completion of the, of, the of the project. So uh, having something like this also is very advantageous to communicate something to your audience in a very 
quick and effective way. Um, you know, if I have a table full of text, I will actually have to take time to read through and understand what's happened since the last time we had this meeting. While with something like this, by looking at the traffic lights here and the progress bar here, I can understand right away if we're in trouble because maybe we have a lot of delays and a lot of critical actions to do, or if we're actually quite well off because a lot of tasks have been completed already and we're ahead of schedule. And I, I don't have to like go through a lot of text to understand that or uh, having um, you, know, you as the presenter actually having to explain a lot. Of course, there is also another advantage for you who creates something like this, and that is that it doesn't take a lot of time to, to create it from scratch or update it. So an example of how this can be updated is uh, by changing the text here. So let's say, for example, that um, this tasks um, on the cloud infrastructure is not delayed anymore. It's actually critical because we're really behind it. If I type in critical, Grant will give me the right icon with the right color popping up. And uh, perhaps we also realize that we're not really on 80%. Maybe somebody messed up a little bit and we're actually on 70%. We're really behind schedule. So as I change my text in that cell as well, the visualization will follow. Uh, another example, if uh, we have, uh, for example, this task that instead has been completed, I'll update the text, I'll insert 100% in that cell, and uh, my progress bar is also up to date. So how is this possible? So as we said again, uh, before uh, Grant uh, establishes a relationship between uh, the, the content of these visual grids and the layer that is on top, which is the visuals. So if I take away the pretty icons, what I have is just a very simple table um, that is very similar to what I had in the previous slide. So just some text and numbers. What Grant allows you to do is matching link, creating a link between, between the two elements. And it becomes very easy to, first of all, reuse this in the future. And uh, you know, like we did before, perhaps uh, just kind of changing the structure, removing some columns, adding some rows. Uh, like for example, let's say that we have a new row here, still part of the develop category. I uh, type in my text, automatically merges onto the rest. Uh, this is not started. I have my text here, my person responsible here. Uh, here again, the formatting is applied automatically. So I have that italic style from the previous cells. And uh, of course this is on 0%, so I'll just leave it blank. And I have the right purpose bar. So very easy to adapt to new projects, move things around uh, if needed, uh, maybe in terms of priorities, for example. Uh, but then when it comes to changing these elements and uh, making them uh, maybe a bit more uh, know, personalized to a new project, for example, is very easy to do. So if we look at the traffic lights here on the side, again, we have this rules menu uh, on the side that dominates what, what is happening and there is a conditional formatting rule. So what we have is a conditional formatting rule that says that if the text is critical, then I need to have a specific icon with a specific color. I can easily change that icon. We have a library of uh, a few uh, dozens or hundreds of, uh, of icons that you can skim through. Uh, so let's say that actually I need a different one then, and a different color perhaps. So I can easily change that with one click as you can see. But I could also change the condition uh, on which this, this rule is based on. Uh, perhaps because you use a different language uh, or simply use a different lingo with a new project. But let's say that um, when I type urgent, I need to have this icon. So if I go back to my visual grid, I'll be updating my table with the right text and then the icons follow. So, all in all, we have something that is, uh, is scalable. You can easily um, create tables like this in a few minutes uh, and you can reuse them in the future. Uh, and it's, it's very repeatable, like it allows you to adapt them to new projects very easily and update uh, the formatting in one click, which of course ensures consistency, which is a very big uh, pain point for, for everyone. 
So I see we're coming to an end here. So we'll wrap things up um, before we jump into the questions from the audience, if there are any, um, if what you saw looked interesting and uh, you think it's worth digging a little bit more to see how Grant can help you specifically and the way you uh, use PowerPoint, then feel free to con contact us at um, our email address, sales at grant.pro, or um, visit our website as well, grant.pro. Uh, let's see if uh, we have any questions from the audience? Seems like there's uh, no questions so far. Uh, so uh, we can probably wrap this up. Thank you very much uh, to everyone for uh, attending this public demo. Uh, once again, feel free to contact us at uh, sales at .pro if you're curious to learn uh, more. Uh, and of course, check out our websites. Um, we'll see you again next Wednesday with uh, one of my colleagues who's going to walk you through one of the other uh, features of Grant that could also be helpful.